All right, it's Mike Koenigs, and I have Super Mario Richard Pacini on right now. He's here from Detroit, and he's picked up a bunch of clients pretty quickly. Let's pick our, our first success story, Super Mario. I just interviewed him last week. Had you like it? Don't no, you? Fine, young man. I did. He is. So I'm here with the awesome John Anthony. <laughs> Oh, my name is Tim Yao. I'm from Yaozio. I uh, do search engine optimization. I uh, came to Mario's event talking about multiplication by subtraction, talking about great tips on, on time management. And I got so much out of it. I got all kinds of good ideas, not just about time management, but about marketing and, and, uh, and different things that, that I can do for, uh, for my business, my businesses. Hey everybody, I'm Vicky Bowler. to actually getting my book published in 14 weeks. And I'm so thankful to Mario and IWB Now Marketing for walking with me on this journey. Uh, it was phenomenal. And I really appreciate the support that I received. And um, just everything has been wonderful. And I thank them very much. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, IWB Now Good evening. We are going to talk about video marketing, and I already saw the comments before I came on screen. So, Rolf and David, thank you so much for sharing that with me. So, David says, now my eyes are adjusting to the lights. Have you ever spoke, have you ever talked at uh, South Campus in Warren? David, as a matter of fact, I have. It's been a while. I'd love to go back, but yes, yes, I have. It was, it was surreal. Be I'm trying to think of what it was for. It was, it was to the business class a few years ago. Thank you for the reminder. I got to get that video footage because I know, know I recorded it, which I'll be talking about why you should. Um, but it was surreal because it was the original building I went to when I was there. And that's a whole other story, but thank you for that. Rolf, bad sound. Thank you for letting me know. I always start this off with a, how does it look? How does it sound? So now we're switched over to this microphone and that camera. So how does it look and sound now? Um, and I wanted to ask um, for the intro video, did it l look bad, sound bad, or could you not even hear it at all? Because that happened last week and I don't want that happening again. I'm trying to figure it out. So we are talking about video marketing and this is this is definitely coming full circle for me because years ago, over five years ago, I wrote the first version of Video Marketing for Business Owners. And if you notice the title of this live cast, you'll notice that I didn't get too creative or change something that works extremely well. I even took a poll the other day and asked uh, Video Marketing what would you, would you rather pay for a training on video marketing or live casting? And I was surprised, I was surprised 
because a lot of people I asked said video marketing. So I'm going to ask you, um, should I do that right now? Eh, why not? Would show. Yay. Would you rather pay for a training on video marketing or live casting? I thought the answer would be live casting because, well, that's what I'm doing right now. And that's the new trend. And I don't want to say fad because it's not going anywhere, but that's the trend. It started with Meerkat in 2015. As far as something easy enough to do from your phone. Now, if someone tells you that live casting is something new, it's not. How do I know this? Because the television industry has been doing it for years. It just w be, finally became very affordable for consumers 2015. You know, you have a phone in your pocket. You know, we had capabilities as business owners, I'd say about a decade, decade and a half. And it, it cost, but if it was advantageous to your business, then who cares? It's an investment, not an expense, right? But now, I mean... I'm bringing this to you, you know, you, you don't need uh, an entire NBC studio or someone. Now, those are fun. And, you know, if you have the opportunity to get in one and be interviewed and do all of that, absolutely do it. Just if nothing more than for the experience of being on camera behind the scenes. Um, I remember back when I was studying all of this that Everyone kept asking me, do you rather be in front of the camera or behind it? And the answer is honestly both. I can do either or, and that's what I studied. It's hard. I don't want to date myself here, but 2005, the stuff's not new. How we do it definitely is. And you may have seen, I went live yesterday from this here. All you need is your phone. And I always start off my signature talk for video marketing for business owners with this question. So guess what I'm going to do now? Whether it's a live audience and we're in person like we'll be this Thursday or we're virtually live. I started saying in person because I used to say, hey, I'm doing a live presentation versus a pre-recorded video. Now with live streaming, I can still come at you live. So now I have to say in person for like a in real life event. It's what I start doing. But I always ask people, who here is using video marketing? Half the room raises their hand. Who's not using video marketing? And then I get, and then the other half, I go, who thinks it's difficult? Half the room. Who'd like to see how easy it is? And then I proceed to pull out the camera from my phone and, you know, help people, educate them, get them. See, I have to get you past the mental handicaps first before you can grow your business. You know that a video is effective. You've probably watched YouTube videos. You're watching right now. And that's why this is surreal. I feel like I'm talking into Alice in the Wonderland class because if I'm talking about anything but video marketing on a live cast, I'm telling you about it. But right now, it's kind of like a looking in at me talking about the exact medium I'm sharing because, I mean, why don't you type in the chat? Is this effective? Do you Can you sense me? Can you convey my emotion? Do you think this is one way that you can communicate other than text? Absolutely. So let me know in the uh, comments below. I'm going to grab some water. Uh, grab the comments below. No, I'm going to grab the water. Comment in the comments below where you're from and what type of business you own. Yum, 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 yum. Uh, we'll put you back down here, away from the keyboard, y'all. And a video is nothing new. Broadcasting is nothing new. How we do it is absolutely new. But what does this mean to you? 
What does it mean to you? You could go, oh, here's someone else talking about video again. And I hope you have that attitude because that would tell me you're aware of it. Chapter one of my book talks about what about what is video marketing and why should I care? Because if you don't understand how powerful it is, then what's your incentive to do anything about it? My goal is to help you acquire more clients and grow your business easier and more simplistic. If we're not in agreement that this is one methodology and I'm saying one methodology, it's not the end all be all. It's very effective though. It's just another arrow in your quiver. That's what I wanted to say without being mean, honestly. Um, sometimes in person, like this Thursday, I just talk and things happen. Whether I should have said it or should have not, no one's generally going to interrupt you when you're the speaker. However, I would try my hardest to keep it fun and lighthearted without being insulting, because that's not the goal. So if it ever comes across that way, I apologize in advance. Sometimes I just get fired up and, you know, now if there's a heckler, that's cool too because they're always fun to play with. But at the end of the day, realistically, no matter what, you're not gonna do anything you don't want to. So, should I talk about LinkedIn? Or should I talk about YouTube? Or should I talk about Facebook Live here? No, it doesn't matter, frankly. So I need to know if you're on board first before I go into the details, otherwise you're just gonna go, oh, that's nice, you know, cool logo. Hey, there's text on the screen. You did something advanced. But sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, I want you to realize how powerful it is. One of the things you can do with the, oh, there's the speaker. Never noticed it before. Um, and I mean the speaker inside of this. This yellow part that you can see is actually just the frame, so that way you're not actually touching it like your eardrum. Uh, but I've honestly never actually noticed the actual speaker part inside before. I guess the lights are brighter today than normal. So what is video marketing and why should you care? Well, comment below. Are you using it? Step one. If not, doesn't matter. Start. And there's some parentheses in there too. Some thoughts didn't make it out. So I'm going to repeat it. If you're not using video marketing, brackets, in your business to reach your audience and help more people, you should. Start now. What Now, from working with hundreds of people on this, and I'm looking at this here, you're probably thinking, well, what about the equipment? What about the lights? What about all that? How do I make it look like yours? It doesn't matter. Right now, it doesn't. There's steps you want to take, okay? It doesn't need to be perfect. Now, I'm going to add in something I've never said before because it wasn't part of me until this year. I would always take the attitude of, don't worry about it, just start. You can always fix it later. Here's the caveat I'm now adding. I still fully stand behind that because there are too many people that are perfectionist. Can't, they won't do anything till it's perfect. And I know people that are launching their videos, launching their books, launching their podcast, launching their whatever, but they've been launching it for like nine years. It's like people I know that have been engaged for like nine years. Oh, we're engaged. When's the wedding? We're engaged. Have you set a date? We're engaged. Stop asking me this because clearly the answer is no. It's the same way. When you say, when are you launching your book? When are you launching your podcast? When are you launching your TV show? When are you launching your program? When are you launching your whatever? When are you having a grand opening? When are you having a re-grand opening? So maybe you don't have a new business, BFD. When's your grand re-grand opening sale, huh? When's your re-grand opening sale? Just saying. So, if you have no date, it's probably not going to get done. In my experience, personally, with hundreds of people, and statistically across the board, the last 100 plus years of successful business owners, when I read their books, it's pretty much the same thing. If you don't have a deadline, 
there's no commitment to getting it done. There's nothing on the line, and that's why it's scary to do. So is this. I am... This is fun for me because I remember I've done this for many different studios and I remember shooting the first one <laughs> and I spent all day. There's 73 copies before I went here and it wasn't even live. So with that being said, I have a background in video production. I have a background in photography, in modeling, on camera, behind camera, all of it. And I had reservations. So I respect and understand where you're coming from. If you've never done this and don't, it's an even bigger gap, perceivably. However, what's your company worth? How much time, energy, and money have you put into your company into the past? Three months, six months, 12 months? probably five or 10 years, 20 years. Shoot, I can say that now, 20 years. Plus, probably 30 or 40, realistically. So, have you ever let other stuff stop you before? No. So why let it stop you now? It is easier than ever, super easier than ever, and now even doing a live stream like this with all the fancy folk stuff, look at that. Mike flag and everything. It is so simple to do, but I'm not going to get into the details. We don't have time for that. I have a short bit of time with you. I have a real short bit of time with you. Wow. Okay. Let's get started. I thought we were started, but apparently not because I have to get through all these. So why? what is video marketing and why should you care? Well, if you're afraid to do it, then there's probably a deeper issue. It has nothing to do with the camera. What do you talk about? So step one. All right. If you're, I know you're taking notes because you're smart. Step one. What is video marketing? Why should you care? It's a way to reach out to your audience and stay in front of them. I'm experimenting with emailing every day. So far, it's going pretty good. You know, multiple times a week. It used to be once a month. And I heard someone say, Oh, you know, you got to be more aggressive. And I was doing it twice a month. Then it was once a week, four times a month. And I was like, you know, and then uh, my business coach was telling me, he's like, you got to break those mental mindsets of, you know, what's holding you back. Well, I don't want the, the only objection with being in front of people more is I don't want to annoy them. But the thing is, think about your, uh, <laughs> yeah, just coming off of a, uh, think about your family. You love them. Now, there may be times they may be annoying, but you still love them. So the only reason when someone goes, I don't want to be in front of them or I don't want to turn them off or be in front of them too much, it's either they know they don't have the right audience or they know they don't believe enough in their product. If you don't believe enough in your product or yourself, you're going to be bashful about it. No matter what you're doing, should I do email marketing? Should I do video shit? Yes, you should do all of it. But what you're segregating and justifying why you're not doing stuff, and the real reason is you're just not confident with what you're doing and or selling. When you are, you can't shut up about it. That's the truth. So as far as the frequency, the only de uh, common denominator left is, are you talking to the right people? If you are, they're going to be eating this up and going, oh my gosh, I used to be hesitant about it also. I am no longer. Because I thought about it and I go, all the people I've spent tens of thousands of dollars worth learning from over the years consistently, what did I do? I went to all their stuff and go, wow, I really like them. They're putting out good content and I got hooked. And then I went to find more. And then there's this phase where you don't just get checked out. People get engulfed. We go, okay, great. He or she is the go-to person. I'm going to go to the very top with them. If they have a training, which they should, and if you have a business, you should have something structured that people can buy, not just random, I provide the service. You can absolutely structure it. 
I also used to provide video services. Hey, we'll shoot this for you. We'll edit it for you. We'll even make it look fancy for you. Just pay us. It wasn't too hard to turn into a book. I thought about everything we did and outlined it and then turned it into a freaking book. And then I turned it into a training and then I turned it into a talk and then I turned it into other things. But the point is, it's all the same content. Don't be lazy. It's only your future and business we're talking about. If you don't care that much, then just tune out now because I've always been passionate about business. I always am passionate about business. I may not always be in the right attitude to want to do it or have to do the work or want to do the work. But ever since I was 12 and started my first company, one thing that no one can take from me is my passion for business and helping others. So even if the whole world is crumbling, which it's not anymore, and I'm thankful for that. Earlier this year was a different case. But I've always had my passion. It always comes back. It's actually truthfully never left. But I can look at you right now and you can ask me anything 24-7 and I'll answer to the best of my ability because I know that's the truth for me. But if you don't have that, I would really strongly you to advise and look at what you're doing because I don't care if you get paid $10 an hour or $10 million a minute. If you hate your life and have no joy, you can't get your time back. That's a big problem. So... When you're on camera and you're helping people, it's just another opportunity to get in front of them and say, hey, I'm here to help you. That's what it is. That's what I talk about. That's what I teach. The second thing. So we're going to go module one. What is video marketing? Why should I care? You know what? I'm feeling so generous right now. I'm even going to type uh, hide. One. What is video marketing and why should I care? Write that down in your notes, or you can pick up the book or the training program. They're both available. They're both the same. I'm taking all the content from there. Full transparency, not overcomplicating this. Uh, new agenda, little thing, VMBO, agenda item, new thing. There we go. So two, moving along here, everyone has problems. I love this. I can't. <laughs> Everyone has problems. How can you help me solve mine? So this goes into what the whole point of doing this on video is for. When we're talking in a business capacity, we're not talking Shrek. We're not talking Nemo. However, if we are, Maya is awesome. So is Avid. So is Boju and Massive. For creating all of those. Real flow dynamics for water simulations. All of that's fantastic. Love it. However, in business, all it is is psychology. Your customers have problems. Help them solve them. That it. Write that one down. That's a good one. I'm not even going to sum up the chapter because... Yeah. That's it. Business is helping people. If you don't help them, they don't follow you. They don't listen. They don't buy from you. They buy from the competition. And if they don't, they're still struggling. And that's the travesty because I know more people that have skill sets and can do anything in the world to help people, but they're just not confident. And there were times that it fluctuated with me, and it, it's the only thing that ever really, truly annoys me. I know I can help you, and for whatever reason, I'm not doing enough to do it. So then I go do another email. I'll generally do an extra one of these. I'll call someone. I'll just do something to help someone. Have you ever wanted to help someone and didn't? How much crap do you feel like that evening? It's not a good feeling. At least I don't think it is. Three. What is three? Who, what, why, where? That's a long title. Who, what, why, where? When should I distribute my videos? Often. Like all the freaking time. I would say do a daily live cast if you can. 
Yeah, at least once a week. At least once a week. Because the thing is, it's not... I should type that in. Three. Who, what, why, where, when should this... Yeah, that's up there. Who, what, why, where, when. Cool. Um, all the time, you've probably noticed I'm doing this more and more. Um, I was doing it on occasion here and there just because I felt like it. And have... Uh, here's the real reason. I have so many freaking videos. I went to find one about two weeks ago. And I found 2,306 extra ones. <laughs> that's a lot. I can do this in my sleep. It's so second nature. I I even downplayed how important it is for you. For me, it was just turn the stuff on and do it. I can come up with one of these in five minutes and then go live and feel just as confident. However, it is fun to actually have the agenda pre-made and all the details, but you know what? It depends because that's a slippery slope. You start getting into detailitis and perfection mode, you'll start spending four hours to do one of these. When you could have done three or four live casts and actually help people instead of thinking about it. So I have like a five minute rule. If I can't do it in five minutes, you got to give me a real good reason why I should cut into everything else that's a priority to take the uh, time, energy, and money required to make it happen. So. Who, what, why, when? Just do just do one in the next. Do one tonight. Do one now. Do one by tomorrow. And go from there. Once you see the benefit of it, it'll be hard not to do them. If you actually want to help people. If you're just trying to screw them over, then don't do this. I don't want you to know this. And that's why you have to apply for my program to learn all the ins and outs and details in the most effective ways. Because this is powerful and... If you look at anyone influential in history, whether they're good or bad, it's a lot of the same principles. It's just easier now to do than ever, and it's in our pocket. Hey, Rolf, how's it going? Rolf's back. Hey, have you been in Germany this whole time? I saw your comments. Are you coming back Wednesday? And I know you asked somewhere. I tagged you in a post earlier. Uh, I'm speaking Thursday morning to answer your question. In Troy, four. Yeah, Hollywood looks on a mainstream budget. Love that one. So, Hollywood looks on a... There we go. Hollywood looks on a mainstream budget. Hollywood looks on a mainstream budget. So, some people say, well, I have the content. I know I'm good. <laughs> well, at least you don't have a self-image issue. <laughs> But that's good, honestly, because I know more good people that have the best knowledge and they're too timid. Don't hide it under a bushel. If you have something good, share it with the world and do it in a big way. Because here's the deal. I don't take it as bragging or boasting or any of that. There is so much freaking. And if you do, that has more. To, that tells me more about your thoughts and thought process than anything. If you're coming to a place from a uh, servant heart and gratitude, you will want the opportunity to be in front of a large audience and affect as many lives for the better as possible. And if people are misinformed, whether it's family, friends, co-workers, colleagues, blah, 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 just whatever, all well-intentioned meaning people, you know, there's this post on Facebook and I just remember many nights crying, going to sleep, actually not going to sleep because there's so much going on, but, you know, crying myself to sleep basically. And it, it was this post and it was like, tell everyone you get a new, uh, tell everyone you got a new job. And, you know, everyone's congratulatory. And they're like, yeah, party. And the other one was tell everyone you started a business and everyone's like, and that's just the truth of the matter. That's the way it is. So if someone's putting you down for anything, don't take it personally. I know sometimes that might be hard to do, especially when you're very uh, emotional and empathic, but it's more a reflection of them, not you. So Go big. Go big and change the world. Don't go big or go home. Go big and change the world. There's only one option because we have a very finite amount of time. And if today was your last, would you be happy with yourself, with what you did and who you helped? 
So you went to the cleaners, you bought some new clothes, you had to have fun time at the movie. That's great. But who did you really help other than yourself? You can't take it with you. So Hollywood looks on a mainstream budget. This is one of my favorite things to teach on because once you get past it and you start doing this, yeah, you're so starting off, don't just don't worry about all this. If you can pull it together pretty quick, like this here, this is three things from Amazon. All I had to do is go click, 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 ship. Two days later, it was there. I forgot I ordered it truthfully. I had so much good stuff going on that week. I forgot about this. And it was one of the biggest things. Because if you're here and you couldn't see this, I hope to God you can hear me. But it just looks weird. I bought this and truthfully was using the other microphone because I didn't want to take the time to hook it up because technical stuff can perhaps, maybe, sometimes lead to technical issues. And my setup was working great. So I just left it. I had this literally not even plugged in, but it was a prop. Right now it's working because I fixed it. Um, I finally got around to it. But the thing is, I didn't want to lose the momentum when, you know, I'm not going to stop all the momentum just to hook up this thing. And, you know, the point is some of this stuff you can do when I tell you the way and it's in the book, it's page four, chapter four. It's in here, wherever page 30, 40, fast action break. Here it is, equipment needed. Page 62 around there. I gave you all the answers. It's all in here. All this crap is in there. It's not a big deal because here's the deal. Why did I go with a yellow microphone? Well, if you look around, why do you think I went with a yellow microphone? They also have this model in blue. Nothing wrong with it. Just doesn't match my branding. What if you want a black one and make it look discreet? I'd urge against it. Unless you're in a white background, and the black was contrasty. Um, it's just another opportunity to get attention. And yellow is the first uh, color your eye sees. So if the whole point of this is to get attention and help people, you can't help them unless you get their attention. And you're not going to get attention by being subtle. So go a little over the top if you think that's over the top. I just thought it matched. But here's the deal. The lights, all of this, it's not overly difficult. I want you, I, I, if you got started and said, thank you for sharing this, I got started, I have more clients, and I got to help more people, I would rather you say that than get into the nitty gritty of, well, what phone are you using? It doesn't matter. As of 10 years ago, they all have good enough cameras on them. So if you have any specific questions, I'll be more than happy to answer it. Specifically to you, um, all the answers are in the book. It's page 60 ish. There's like eight or 10 pages on it. But the thing is just get started with it. Just grab your phone. And I always, always, always say the same thing. I'd never tell anyone, well, if you want to start video marketing, then what you need to do is go spend $9,000 on a microphone and $50,000 on a camera and $200,000 on lights. No, grab the phone out of your pocket. iPhone, Android doesn't matter for whatever reason. You still have a Blackberry. They still work. They have cameras. Mine did. And I actually loved it. I wish they would have done things differently. I held out for them, but they didn't release 4G like two years after everyone else. That was it because I need reliability. So when my clients, I'm talking to them, they can hear me so I can help them not add to the confusion. So Hollywood looks on a mainstream budget. The next thing, I know it's the call to action. And if not, it's going to be the one right after that because it's that important. What is your company offering? Why should I care? Then buy it. Yep, that's the call to action one. The offer. And since I'm being nice, I'll put it in here. What is your company offering and why should... Oh, why should I care and then buy it? So step five, 
what is your company offering? Why should I care? And then buy it. I would have just summed that up to say offer and call to action. You need to get people to move. Feel free to put in the chat what your business is and how you help people. And I can give you a specific example. But regardless of what business you're in, you need to be able to help people. And you have to clearly articulate how you can help them. You can't say, well, I do. Watch isn't on. Grab one. Gold. See? Yellow. More colors. Um Blah, 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 blah. And like five minutes later, and they go, oh, wow, sounds interesting. If they're like, oh, wow, that sounds good or interesting, that means I have no clue what you're talking about, but I'm being polite. And watch me go away in 30 seconds. You have to clearly articulate. I lead entrepreneurs in transforming their expertise into profits in under 59 days. Now, does that make sense? Did I just come up with that in 10 seconds? No, that actually took a few months of working on and refining. And I still perfected it even more this weekend thanks to Laura. Swapped out the word help with a lead. And then I looked up the definitions and it actually is more applicable and it sounds more powerful. But the truth is I help you turn your expertise into profits. Because there's a lot of stuff you have knowledge on that you're. Pr I know you're overlooking and you might just be handing out information, doing a one-on-one -on -one talking, and you're giving all your best like I am right now, but you're only doing it one-on-one. -on -one. If I were to take a look at your company's website, LinkedIn, Facebook, any of that, do you have a book published? Do you have videos published? Do you have any information other than what's in your head? And the only way to disseminate it is through a one-on-one -on -one appointment. There's a lot you're missing, like 90%. So... That's why I enjoy helping people do it. Question, how is it going to win the soccer? How is... Rolf, how is going to win the soccer world championship? Question, how is going to win? I think I'm missing something or the comment didn't come fully through. How is going to win the soccer world championship in 2018? Soccer ball world? Is part of that missing, Rolf? Oh, question, who is going to win? <laughs> That's a good question. I am not sure, but I'm excited to find out. Who do you think is going to win? Yeah, I don't have a crystal ball, but they will be using the same principles on television. Yeah, so that's a good ex that's a good example. I usually use the Olympics, soccer, um, all of that. It's been being broadcast. It's been being broadcast. That doesn't seem right, but I'm fine with it. Moving on. So if you look at all the biggest companies around, what are they doing? They are using video to reach more people. You generally see them as TV shows, but if you notice what Facebook is doing specifically, they now have a watch tab. They are competing with Netflix. So here's the deal. You have the technology here. It, we, we already know it's in our pocket with the Android and iPhones. But if you want the real behind the scenes, take a look at what companies are doing. Why would Facebook, the one of the biggest and most profitable companies on earth, buy up another company? You know, why would they buy up Instagram? Why would they buy up this? Why would they buy up that? If Twitter gave them the opportunity. Facebook would try acquiring Twitter as well. They originally came out with Periscope for live, ca live casting. Just look at behind the scenes. I actually pulled up a listing of all Facebook's acquisitions in the last three, four years is all around video and virtual reality. If they deem it important, maybe you should too. Why did I write my first book on video marketing? <laughs> because I knew it wasn't going anywhere in six to 12 months or a decade. So far, it's been working for five years, and I've had to change very little on it. I added a chapter this year on live casting, because now you can do it, and it's easy enough to teach instead of saying, oh, yeah, go." you actually, prior to Meerkat was around Periscope, 
Facebook released it in uh, 2016. Prior to last year, it would have cost you at least thousands of dollars to get started. Now, close to nothing. I mean, even if you want uh, simple lights, a couple hundred bucks, microphone, add another hundred, camera, you can use any webcam. I'm looking at a new one myself. They're all only, they're all, all the best ones are now only one to two hundred bucks. I'm not talking a conference room one where you can zoom in and do you know multiple things with fifteen people. Though, but still, they're still under a grand. Cameras, you know, when I was learning, were at five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars just for that one piece. Now, I mean, you can. Let me know if you've ever done a live cast from uh, your phone, because you absolutely can. It's not that hard. I did one the other day. I do like doing these because you can schedule them and there's some extra tools available. However, if you just want to get started with it, think of this. Think about what you can do, how you can help, and then write down five to ten different things and just speak on that. I... Put put in the put in the comment section what you do and who you help, and I'll help you come up with five or ten questions. It's not that hard. And then all you have to do is shoot a video on each one of those, or do this in a fashion like uh, tonight's show, and go through all of it in one. Uh, another thing I like to do, you've heard me teach on this before, perhaps seven step process. Go through one 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 item a night. And actually, you could do it with this too because this is your seven step ultimate guide. You could, and that is absolutely by design. Well, why are both books seven chapters instead of 10 or 20? Well, you can do whatever you want, it doesn't matter. But this, this is geared for business and it absolutely does lend itself very, very easily to doing one show a night. And then after a week, you have content you can use for at least the next year. Or go back and reteach it with a new audience. But the point is, it's not hard to create the content. Which is a good segue into six spear chuck for the five year plan. Whoa, bingo. Spear Chuck or the five-year plan, do you just want to do this happenstance or do you want to actually have a game plan with it? If you don't want to be overwhelmed, draw up at least three months, six months. Do a year out. Do a year, one year, three year, five year. I just put five in the book because it was more dramatic. You know, you don't need to plan out every single video for the next half decade. I'm sure it's going to change. But the one-year plan... Truthfully, if, you, if you're only planning a year out for your business, it's not long enough. Three just was an odd number, and I didn't like it. So <laughs> five is still odd. It just seems nicer to me. Um, it does give you some insight, though, because I have been saying since 2012, when I changed the company name around to IWD Now Marketing, everyone said, why IWD Now? I go, I've changed the name three other times. I'm tired of it. When we're using holograms to advertise and market with a decade or two from now, I'll be able to use the same name and it's the God's honest truth. We're five years into it. So hopefully in the next five years, we're using holograms to market and I can pull up a video from a dec decade previously because that's just the matter. Don't get caught up with all the details. Just know who your audience is and how you can help them. Whatever methodology at the time, we very well could have holograms in five years for advertising. They're probably out there. They're just not mainstream yet. I haven't heard anything on them. I might look it up. But how would you like that? You open a little uh, card for me? See a little thing start glowing? I mean, they had it for Star Wars in the 70s. It's, I, I'm sure I know the text there. Um, but the point is, are you just randomly happenstance in this? I would rather you randomly do stuff than not do anything, but don't get caught. I, I say this all the time. Don't get caught up in startup mode. Everyone's natural tendency is, oh, I'm just running and gunning, running and gunning. That's fantastic. And I did that for the first five years. 
I did it the first five years of my business and the second five, truthfully, now that I think about it. And maybe that's why I'm so passionate about saying don't get caught up in startup mode. Because at the end of the day, you might be, you might have all the greatest answers in the world. You might really have a heart to serve people. But if you're still operating as if you're building your company one day at a time, one week at a time, and don't have any vision for the future, it's going to shine through. Now, that's not to say everything has to be perfect, because the truth is you are building your company one day at a time, one week at a time. But when you say, hey, here's what I'm aiming for. So by the end of 2018, here's where I want to be here. You know, this is my goal. This is the vision. This is what I'm working towards. This is what I'm doing right now. It's part of the bigger plan. That's a lot different than, oh my gosh, let me tell you what I'm excited about this week. And then next week, oh, let me tell you what I'm excited about this week. I see a lot of people do this and it comes across cost is they're always jumping from one thing to another. When you say this is part of the bigger plan and here's what I'm aiming for and there's 26 components and I'm doing one every two weeks so that way I can get through it in a year, you sound a lot smarter like you actually have a plan that you're following and executing and implementing. Not that you're a random jumper and you know I've had people, I know they're working on something big because they've told me and I appreciate that and respect it. Now, whether I lead them and say, you know, get them to that point or they just are willing to open up more and trust me with it, I don't know which it, what it is, which it is. It's probably a mixture of both. But I hear from other people say the same thing like, oh, man, I think they're on their like sixth or seventh business for this year. I go, no, it's actually all part of the same one. Really? Not a good conversation. You set the stage. You set the tone for your business. So why not make it a good one? Again, it's only your business and life we're talking about. So the last thing here, seven, it deals with implementation and getting the most out of your video marketing. Video marketing implementation, 107, getting the most out of your video marketing. You'd think I actually wrote the book on this. And show. You got to do this. You got to do it. You can't just go, I know all about that. I love it when people say that. I love when people say it. Well, I already heard you talk about that. I already know all about that video marketing thing, that live casting, that using the camera to talk to people. Great. Where are your videos at? How often are you doing it? They look at me like I just asked them who they shot and where the body was buried at. Why would you ask me such a thing? Because you sound like a prick. You might know about it, but how well are you doing it? Just saying. If you've heard about it and you're not doing it, why is it? Please. Please put it down here. Because I... It can only be one of a few things. You're fearful of being on camera. You're not sure what to say. Maybe you don't want to annoy people. It deals with the frequency, content, and honestly, selfishness. I've told my clients this. When if if it's getting less and less, but there was a time when, you know, probably 20, 30 percent were going, well, I don't know if I want to go on camera. I go, okay, why not? Well, this and that. Okay. Anything else? Well, you know, this too. Okay. That's pretty normal. Is there anything I haven't asked you? No. Why are you being so selfish? What do you mean being selfish? I'm not being selfish. I just don't like being on camera. Okay. So you're either regurgitating something back that you were told and brainwashed into thinking as a child that, you know, you shouldn't be on camera for whatever reason. Or... You're not confident with the content you're going to deliver or the product you're selling. And if that's not it, 
then what is it? Well, I just don't like the way I look. So you're being selfish because it's all about you and not who you're helping. No. Hmm. So it's not about how you look then, huh? Well, I don't like the way I sound. I don't like my voice. Because you're being selfish. When you don't care what's going on, it's one of my favorite things to do is do something from the pool or a hot tub. Because there's no, you're not going to have lights and cameras and all that. Now, if you are going to do that, make sure there is light around and you're facing it. The, so the lighting on the subject, you, it doesn't look dark and ominous, I think is the word. Because there's been times I've seen people do it and good for them for breaking out of the mold and being that confident that they can be swimming and still being able to deliver the content and look in the camera, but the lighting was so bad it looked a little creepy. There's usually lights around the perimeter of the pool, so go to the, oh, or go in the exact center of it. Go to the exact center because there's usually lights around it. Just make sure they're not blocked from where you're standing, and there will be enough light that it should look okay. Just, you know, if I'm facing this way, lighting's good. If I face that way, it gets darker. Spin around, you have the whole thing to yourself. So, implementing it, just do it. Nike has a great slogan, props to them. But that's really what it's about. Who are you helping? It comes down to, you care now, you know you should be doing it. There's stuff you can be talking about. The setup doesn't matter. You have your phone just doing it. But why? It's to help people. Have that servant heart. You're doing this to help people. I, I could be doing anything in the world right now, but I really wanted to come and help you with this. That's why I'm doing it. I had to get dressed for this. I wasn't wearing a dress shirt just randomly for no reason. I have to have a reason for it. Like Thursday when I'm speaking, it'll be to a live audience in person. Got to put on a suit and tie. Not going to show up in flip-flops, although some people do. Not sure why, but good for them. When you go through all the steps, the last and the most important, bestest one is implementation. How to leverage it. So, since you stuck around till the end, I'll give you the little bonus. How's that sound? Take the video and turn it into text. Turn it into audio. This is words. This was also partially shot on video and partially spoken into. And then I had my assistant transcribe it. Not the whole thing, but I started. I also finished it. I know people from five plus years ago who actually wanted to write a book and are still working on it. I hodgepodged it. And then when I realized how easy it was, I started actually caring about it, but I was already like a third to half the way done. And then from there, it was easy. But I started just by getting the ball rolling. The best ways to leverage it are to get started and then distribute it all over. There are things you can do on YouTube to get even more leverage, and I'm not going to get into SEO and keywords and all that, but you absolutely can. Facebook, put it on your business page and pay to boost the post. You will get astonishing reach. Astonishing reach. Vimeo, another way. Store your archival footage in HD on Vimeo. If you're using this for sales, put it on Wistia. These are all different outlets. So I love it when, pe I, again, people say, I know all about that. You might know how to do it because, honestly, it's clicking a button. You go Facebook, click the button, and says, what do you want to do? Do you want text, photo, or live? You click live, you hit go. You don't need to be a rocket surgeon to do it. But that goes into don't be stuck in startup mode. And when you get to a point where you want to do the fancier setup and different things, what do you do? What are the best ways to do it? There's a lot of them. I covered as much as I could in the time allowed. I'm going to open it for a little bit of Q&A, but I have to run. So let's do the 60-second shot clock. I'm going to have some more water and go.
Oh, uh, go back up. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So wrapping up, recap, video marketing for business owners, what is marketing and why should I care? Everyone has problems. How can you help me solve mine? Remember, be client centric. Use the videos to address the common objections and problems you constantly get faced. No, your customers face the ones they tell you. You provide a solution to their problem, and here's the list of problems they have. Talk about those. Who was, who, what, why, when, where should I distribute my videos? This is going to constantly change. I have a listing in the book, okay? It's chapter three. If the site's around, awesome. If it's not, no big deal, there's probably a new one. One of the new ones is Facebook Live, okay? Make sure you're doing it on your business page as well. Take the video, also put it onto YouTube, and also put the original into Vimeo. Vimeo is more for storing it on your website. Uh, YouTube is for the social reach. I would not suggest embedding YouTube videos into your main site to look the best. Other reasons on that, I got in other trainings, but use Vimeo for that. Use social for sharing and getting the reach out there. You're also in multiple playgrounds. These are different. Think of them as different business meetings. When you're on Amazon with your book, it's a different audience than is on YouTube, than is on Facebook, than is on Twitter. You want to be in all of them. You're getting access to these. They're not just distribution. They're free advertising and different audiences. You're going to notice different trends with all of them. But the point is, who, who, you have to be solving the problem and who, what, when, when. Do it more often. Here's the answer to that. You're going to look at your own stats. One of the reasons I did this earlier is because I looked at my numbers and realized peak was 9 p.m. And sure enough, I started this and then People were here, people were here, people were coming, people were coming, and then I noticed a spike out of the corner of my eye, and when I saw it, sure enough. So look at your numbers. You know, I, I've done these at 3 in the afternoon, 6 at night, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, midnight, when I got home one time because I was just excited. There were people. There was less. So just know your market. Hollywood will, looks on a mainstream budget. That is a fun one because that it's one I enjoy. Whether it's just my personality or the fact that I spent seven years learning all of the production and editing and all that stuff behind the scenes, you don't need all of it. But when you get to that level, it makes it look it makes it look stand out better. It makes it stand out and look better because there's a lot of people that you might see do things, but how they do it. You know, I know people that are like, "Well, I wrote a book." Well, my first question is, did you get it printed? Is it an ebook? Again, it's that commitment and foresight and vision. If you took the time to make a full hundred page book and it's on ebook, why wouldn't you send it to the printer? I sent something to the printer while I was prepping for this and got a phone call six minutes before this was going live for some business cards. Click, click, go, pay. 22 minutes they were done. Oh, I'm still working on them. For what? Get these, get rid of them, order more. I did a small batch because I might change something. Well, I want the absolute best deal. These are two cents a piece. I want them for a dollar. Uh, these are two cents a piece. I want them for half a cent a piece. Okay, so get 10000 and then feel like you're obligated to keep them for four years, even though everything's changed. Get it and go. Get it and go. You can always buy more. Even if you get on Amazon, it takes two days. Business is about speed, not getting stuck up with uh, making sure it's perfect. Well, I'm working on my cover still. When's your book launching? This is in January. Oh, I'm going to get it done this year. Still working on the cover as of last week. 
got five weeks left. I, I've done a book in five days, so I know it's possible, but if anyone else but them said it, I'd believe it's possible. But what is your company offering and why should I care and then buy it? You got to tell them what's in it for them. What are the benefits? You got to stand out from everyone else. It used to be, I have a book, you stand out. I have a video, I stand out. Now, you got to up the frequency and reach and still be doing all the other stuff. That's why everyone liked cable advertising in the 50s and 60s. You could buy up all the airwaves for pennies on the dollar because there was no competition. Then the leaders in the industry create a vacuum. Everyone else follows. And then you have to be on the new forefront. And the more people in the marketplace, you have to stand out. So the frequency may have to be higher because if even if there's someone that is not as good as you and they're louder, they're going to get heard more. Now, you can craft the messaging. There's things you can do, the ways. There's more effective techniques. If you're paying for advertising versus organic, it's going to be to your advantage. There's strategies. But you can't kick it with a stick. So I adopted this new slogan recently. Hey, it's only your business, livelihood, and life we're talking about, right? That's for anyone that goes, well, I'm not sure if I have the time. That's the adult equivalent of my dog ate my homework. So this is your career and your passion and your life, and you can't devote six extra minutes for something? Not who I work with. Spear Chuck or the five-year plan? Have some vision. Do 12 months, three years, five years. Don't just randomly kick it with a stick. And when I say kick it with a stick, I mean don't have a plan. If you're in the implementation and this is the first time off the gate, high five. Way, for go way to go for going after it. But don't stay. It, sometimes it's easy to be in content creation mode and implementation mode that you actually do get it to a point where you're good. You don't need to do it anymore. But the habit is now created. The habit is now created. I'm not saying get lazy, but don't think you constantly have to be doing stuff just to, I don't know, just to be successful, just to be whatever, it's personal for everyone, but I know some people, they are 10 years beyond startup mode, and they don't, I mean, everything's on autopilot, and they cre what they're doing is creating reasons, it's probably emotional psychologist stuff. The whole reason I'm doing this is so I can spend more time with family and friends and enjoy life. And I know some ambitious people, and it seems to me they're trying to avoid that. And that has nothing to do with tech. But my whole reason for staying up for two and a half days straight getting stuff done so I don't have to go back ever, I guarantee you there were times when I was writing this, I probably should, actually, the night I launched it, I was up till 5 in the morning and woke up at 10. Five hours sleep the night of the launch. I probably didn't sleep too much the two nights before. I haven't had to really do a ton with it in five years, though. If you're going to kill yourself, you better make sure it's going to give you five or ten years of leverage. When I hear people doing the same thing day in, day out, oh, a slow day for them is 20 hours. I'm like, you have a wife and kids and husband and kids and family and friends, and it's like you're killing your relationships. For what? To go on another random coffee appointment for a stranger that probably isn't interested in the first place because you didn't qualify them? Not why I'm doing the stuff I am. And some people, I wish they would change it, but they don't want to. And they've been to at least half a dozen of my trainings and we've talked one-on-one -on -one and they're still doing it. And I feel bad, but I'm also not going to suck up 20 more hours of my time away from my family and friends and like, there's a point where you have to mentally go, all right, this is it. Maybe it's you're excited and decide to. Maybe some bad stuff happens and you get 
a new outlook or revelation on life. Whatever it is, I just hope that you don't do it forever because time is precious. So Spear Chucker, the five-year plan. Go after it. Don't doesn't have to be perfect to start, but don't be in, in startup mode for more than three months. Okay. After that, look at what you've done and then look at ways you can do it more effectively. Last but not least, implementation and getting the most, does that say most or host? Most, should say most. Getting the most out of your video marketing. Show me your first five videos and I'll tell you some super advanced behind the stuff, but I'm not gonna overwhelm you with that stuff now. That is the only thing I'm ever concerned about when I'm helping people and working with my clients in my class weekly. I don't wanna give them too much. You got to be doing the steps. If I told you every last little step in detail, there's probably 97 of them. You know, all the minute little things. Well, what about this? What about that? You know this. Do you have a microphone? Yes. Which kind? Well, that's a, that's a seminar in itself. You know, how do I hook it up? What's the best way? What's the best way to get audio? What should I do with the audio? Do you have a mic flag? What does this do? Nothing. It's advertising. It has no bearing on whether you can hear me or not. It's simply advertising in good brand promotional awareness. Well, what about those? How do I hook it? Don't worry about it. Do your first five, and then we'll go back and tweak them. And then you do five more the better way. If you want to look at, um, I'm not going to say it because I'm going to be using this for something else, but um, lo just look down on my page here. I'll say that. Look down on my page here, and you'll see something that was in quick implementation and it took longer than I thought it took longer than I thought I'm glad because it turned out better but when I say don't be in startup mode draw the line in the sand don't be a perfectionist it doesn't mean take six months doing it you can do 28 variations quick quick so I've enjoyed sharing it's always an honor, and if you have questions, comments, or great ideas, put them in here, and I will see you on the next one. God bless.